Hey, you got the Captain, Captain Fuzzy here. Uh, it's been a little while since I did a tutorial. Uh, life got in the way. Uh, but I'm back. And uh, I've got a little tutorial here. I'm going to show you how to do some basic camera settings to make your image, your poster, whatever you're uh, exporting, look just a little bit better. So, with that in mind, I've created this quick little scene here to kind of show you how to go about making the camera adjustments on it to make the scene look a little bit better, make it pop a little bit. So first off, as you can see back here, my particle's not where it is to match up and everything like that, but that's okay because all I've got to do is move forward in time just a little bit here. And then everything lines right up where I want it to be. And that's the shot I want right there. So now that I've got my shot set up, now I need to set up my camera. So here's my camera. I have it highlighted. Uh, first thing I want to do is go to my lenses. Now typically most images are shot with a 35 millimeter camera. Now that can vary. It depends on the effect that you want to go with. But for the purposes of this tutorial, uh, I'm going to go with your typical 35 millimeter setup. So I'm going to grab that 35 millimeter slider and I'm going to drag it all the way to the right. Now, as you can see, it just moved my camera way back away from where I had it framed up. That's okay, because all we've got to do is click and hold and move the camera back up to where I want it, which is going to be, oh, yeah, right about there. Drop this down just a hair and get a little bit closer because he's kind of the focal point of the shot. So I kind of want him mainly close to the middle but not dead in the middle for the simple fact that I want everybody in there. So right there looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to hit enter and confirm it. And now we get to move on to our camera settings. We'll go back up here and click the procedural tab uh, because we don't need to mess with the lenses anymore. Now all we're going to focus on is these settings right here. Now first off, when you, you can only make your adjustments uh, in the motion editor, which is where we're at right now. But in order to actually see or get an idea anyway of what your... Uh, final render is going to look like you have to go into the clip editor and so for right now in the clip editor this is where we're at um, looks pretty good for the most part uh, looks a little dark so we can fix that so let's go back into the motion editor and let's uh, bring the tone map scale up just a little bit Whoop, that's a bit much. Let's lower it to right about there. Mm. Yeah, that's that's pretty decent right there. We don't need to go too much. Uh, you can double click these and put numbers in here. As you can see there, there's numbers already in there for the adjustment. I'm going to go ahead and back this off a little bit. And I'm going to go ahead and hit that that should that's pretty good for what I'm looking for uh, we've already got some pretty decent bloom scale in there because uh, we got a little bit of bloom right there as it is I can back that off just a little bit not too much we want just a little bit of a shine coming off of the statue there because it is a gold statue after all let's hit enter and so we got just a little bit of shine there and now let's click this and see what it looks like. And we're at this point now where that's looking not too bad. But we need, I, I kind of like to have the background characters kind of slightly blurred out just a little bit. So what we need to do first is go to the focal distance slider. And let's slide this back to the right until it basically goes kind of through the middle of the scalp like about like that right there maybe just a touch more right about in there now now that we've done that now we need to adjust the aperture 
and this is adjusts how much um, blur that you're adding to your image so the further to the right you drag this the more blurry it's going to get so you want to use this in small increments so my best advice is double click on this and set this to about 0.12 and then hit enter and when we flip back here you'll you won't see the full effect of it but you get a general idea of about how much you're going to have and that's about where I like it so that's generally what I recommend or pull the aperture slider over to about where you see it here because that's the same thing it's the same so I've got that set that looks pretty good okay one last thing we need to go into our render settings so once we've got this all set up oh make sure when you get ready to render your image that you are on your main camera and that you are in the clip editor otherwise you're wasting your time with these settings because it'll render something completely different um, right click in the middle of the viewport go to the render settings now normally this is on and this is normally set to default well as you can see here when those are in their default settings yeah he looks he looks pretty blurry so in order to take care of that you shut off motion blur now to get the shadowing and stuff to look right on him what you're going to want to do is, is go to your camera settings I like to do about 128 uh, for depth of field uh, 256 is pretty good for still images so I'm gonna go ahead and go with 128 go with what works you know so I'm gonna go with 128 on the depth of field and turn off the motion blur leave the rest of it alone and hit OK and there is what our image looks like and it looks like we're ready to give this thing a run through and see what we get so before you do anything else hit control s save your work and then we're going to go up here to file and we're going to go to export and now this is going to blow your mind but we are going to not going to use poster and we're not going to use image and I'm going to show you why we're going to use movie and what we're going to do here is export in image sequence we do not need a separate wave file so make sure that's unchecked you really don't need this unless you just particularly want it you're going to set this one to custom and since we have 0.333 seconds on here I'm going to set this range from 0 frames or 0 seconds rather to 0.4 seconds that way I get everything that I'm looking for this is all you really need to mess with you don't need to mess with the more options that's that's something I mean you can fiddle with it later if you want on your own but it, just to do a quick export like this you don't really even need to mess with it then all you do is click export movie and let it do its thing okay yeah I'm gonna hit yes and let it overwrite because I did this once before and yes it'll pop up it'll say not responding blah 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 and all of that neat junk uh, but now as you can see by these numbers up here it is rendering images so as it goes through each frame that number will go up and once it gets to point three 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 or point four rather that's because that's where I set it once it gets up to point four then it'll stop because that's all I set it to render was four seconds of video or four seconds worth of image sequences should I say and we're getting there now uh, 
depending on your system, of course, this might go a little faster or might go a little bit slower. So you want to try and get everything as close as to what you can get it first time out so that you don't have to repeat your renders over and over and over again. But sometimes you do. Sometimes you just have to do it a couple of times because you're not going to, you're not really going to know for sure what this looks like until it's actually finished. So we're just about there. We should have one or two more frames to go. And there's the frame I want to keep. And there should be one more, one or two more. And I think that might be it. I think we're done. Yeah, because it stopped at 0.366. So, okay, I can back this off one frame and put it back where I had it. And now let's open her up and see what she looks like. And I saved them to here. And you're going to have several images here, of course. Um, this one should be the one I'm looking for right here well we'll start here okay yeah that's the one I wanted and yeah everything actually looks pretty good on it so that's the one I want to keep so then all you have to do is is press shift click on there then press control and check click on that one because that's the one I want to keep and then we'll just delete the rest of these and that will leave us with just this one which is the one I wanted to keep and there you go you got yourself a pretty nice little image there after those settings there are other settings in here that you can um, mess with to even kind of even make it pop a little bit more as an example um, I usually like to set this all the way here grab this one for the strength pull it all the way there pull the radius all the way there and yes you as you can see it kind of really overpowers the shadows but it's a starting point so see as you can as you can see here I've got him pretty shadowed so what you do when you get to this point grab the strength and back it off about halfway back the radius off about halfway and let's grab the bias and pull it up just a little bit about halfway and then we'll click on there and see what that looks like now as you can see here you've got a little more detail to the shadowing and stuff the, the shadows and stuff like that so that can actually make it look even better if we just pull this up just a little bit back this off just a little bit and let's pull the radius back just a tad pull the bias back about there strength let's run it up not too much because I want to get a little bit of that uh, shading up, up there let's grab the radius pull it just a back this way just a little bit and let's see what that looks like I'd say that's a good deal better right there let's pull the strength up just a little bit more okay and again these can be double clicked on and you can set numbers in here as well um, that one looks pretty good. Now let's compare a render of this to what I've already got. So first things first, let's rename this so I don't mess it up. That way I can compare the two of them. So I'm going to go ahead and just name that that. And now that I've got that, let's hit Control S, save, hit file. And let's go to export movie everything stays the same because I haven't shut down so I'm gonna go ahead and just click export and we're gonna re-export this again 
and let's compare the two of them because it'll export the same thing that it just just did um, the only difference is is this one will have different adjustments than the other one and then we can compare the two of them side by side and see what the differences are so we'll wait on this one to finish again it'll take a minute or two based on the speed of your system how beefy it is uh, but basically don't mess with anything just sit back relax let it do its thing that's one of the most common noob mistakes is you see it do something like this and you don't notice these little numbers up here are ticking and you get on there and you start pushing buttons and clicking mice and stuff like that and, and you end up either a making it take longer than it should because it kind of gets choked or you just flat out make it crash and it messes it up so don't play with nothing until it's done just leave it alone sit back and watch because something like this is literally only about four seconds so it's at 24 frames a second you know it's you know you're only looking at a handful of frames, about 11 frames altogether. So, well, no, you're looking at more than that. But anyway, you're looking at about 11 images altogether. And there we go. It's done. And so we'll go back in here. And we'll take the same one. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and click that one then shift click here and then control click here and let's see here we're gonna delete these and this one's the same one and there he is okay now let's compare him side by side with this one Okay, let's get the other one up here. And if we move these guys over here, side by side, you can see the differences. This is the one that I uh, just rendered with the shadow adjustments, and this one is the one that I rendered without the shadow adjustments. And as you can see, that took some of the bloom scale out, a little bit of it, and kind of highlighted his features a little bit better, um, shaded him in a little bit better. In my opinion, this one's a better quality than this one is. So, to be perfectly honest, this would be the one that I would go with. So, I'm going to go ahead, close that one. This one, in my opinion, is a much better image. There's not too much bloom, there's a little bit there. Everything else looks pretty good. Um, slightly out of focus, but not too far out. Um, in my opinion, an all-around pretty good picture there. So, I'm going to go ahead and delete that one. And rename this one, because I'm going to go ahead and keep this one. So, I'm just going to go ahead and... save that one and there you go that's camera basics it's really not all that hard to get a hang of how to set the camera so that you get the best possible picture that you can get out of it um, once again you got the captain captain fuzzy and i am out of here